if you plan to install the latest macOS on old unsupported Macs. The question is, what is more important? A faster CPU with more cores or more memory? And what are the minimum recommended requirements to run the latest macOS Sequoia on old unsupported Macs? Welcome to Jesse's Flying. And in my last video where I compared all different generations of unsupported Macs with the latest macOS Sequoia, the MacBook Air 2013 was really the slowest Mac of all of them. But I wanted to find out if the reason for it being so slow is its CPU, that is only two cores, or maybe its memory, which is only four gigabytes. I thought I can compare it to the way faster MacBook Pro 2012, so that is one year older, but it has a four core CPU and eight gigabytes of memory. But as the old Macs are upgradable, I could just remove four gigabytes of memory out of that MacBook Pro, so both of them have four gigabytes, and I could run some benchmarks to see if that additional memory makes the difference or not. And then I used a tool to disable two CPU cores. So the MacBook Pro only had two cores as the MacBook Air, and then I could benchmark it again with four gigabytes of memory and with eight gigabytes of memory. So at the end of this video, I hopefully can answer the question, what is more important, a faster CPU or more memory? Or is there like a minimum requirement that you really should have in your Mac if you are planning to install the latest Mac or Sequoia on an unsupported Mac? So let's start with the CPU benchmarks of Geekbench 6. One thing up front, the tool I used to disable the CPU cores in the MacBook Pro only allowed me to set two cores with three threads. And that is one thread less than the MacBook Air, which has two cores, four threads, because each core can handle two threads. That is like a specialty of that tool. I don't know why, but it shouldn't have so much effect on our benchmarks and on the overall picture. So let's start with the benchmarks and you can see that the single CPU core score goes up from around 650 in the MacBook Pro to 693 in the MacBook Air. Why? Obviously because the CPU in the MacBook Air 2013 is one generation younger than the CPU in the MacBook Pro 2012 and Intel obviously increased performance per core. And the other obvious thing is that if you have a two core CPU, it can reach nearly 1400 score against a four core CPU that can reach 2330. So that makes the MacBook Pro CPU wise much faster than the MacBook Air, even though it's one generation older. But as you can see, when you decrease the memory from eight to four gigabytes, the overall score goes down from 2330 to 2039. So that is 300 scores less just to the decrease of memory. Another obvious thing, CPU needs memory to handle all the data. And as much memory as it gets, the faster it gets because otherwise it has to get the data maybe onto the hard disk or read again and throw it out of its registers and so on. So it makes it faster with more memory. And the last scores on the right were where I decreased the MacBook Pro from four cores, eight threads, to two cores, three threads. And you can see the single core performance goes down as well but that might be an effect due to only disabling it software-wise. So it might be that the tool just slowed it down a little bit, the benchmarks. But obviously the multi-core score is half of that than before. So up until now, everything quite obvious. Now let's talk about the Novabench benchmark, which takes the whole system into a full benchmark. There you can see, obviously, the overall blue scoring goes down for the MacBook Pro 
as we decrease the memory and then we decrease the cores and then we have the decreased cores with less memory which is obvious as well but here you can see that the MacBook Pro with two cores has a scoring around 100, 101 and 99, but the MacBook Air only has 89, even though it has a younger CPU. And that might be an effect as the MacBook Pro has an i7 CPU with higher gigahertz than the MacBook Air, which only has an i5 CPU with less gigahertz and I wasn't quite satisfied with that results so it doesn't tell me anything it just tells me okay if I decrease course or decrease memory obviously scores goes down and so I just went back to take a stopwatch and to see how fast it really is with general apps and general behavior and here you can see the start times for Safari, for the weather app and the Maps app. And you can see that Safari doesn't make a difference if we have eight gigabytes or four gigabytes and it needs 3.7 seconds on a two core CPU, but 4.3 seconds when we just take that two core CPU and just give it four gigabytes of memory. The weather app demands a four core CPU and eight gigabytes as a minimum. With Maps, Maps just increases its speeds with a four core eight gigabytes. And when we go to Apple TV or the App Store, you can see that Apple TV on a two core CPU takes 5.4 seconds. Nevertheless, if you have eight or four gigabytes of memory, but on a four core CPU, it gets a little faster with four gigabytes and it gets a little bit more faster with eight gigabytes. Whereas the App Store only takes into account if you have four or two cores, because with four cores, it doesn't matter the memory, it's 3.4 seconds, with two cores, it's 4.1. And so it's not that clear as I hoped, but it seems that some apps have their sweet spot with a four core CPU and eight gigabytes of memory. If you would like to participate and share your findings and maybe your benchmarks, I really invite you to join our Discord server. The link is down in the video description and we are so close to reaching 3000 members uh, right now. And it's such a great community. And I thank everyone who takes part in that nice community, answering questions, helping each other. So if you got some results of uh, maybe Nova Bench or Geekbench or just take the stopwatch and see how fast your Mac opens these apps, share it with us. Share it on Discord so uh, everyone can see, oh, okay, I have the same model um, that was just shown here. Does it make sense to install Sequoia or Sonoma? Or shall I just stay a little bit with an older macOS that is not so hardware demanding? If you haven't yet, I would really appreciate if you subscribe my channel, click the bell for notification so you don't miss any new video. Have fun here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.